Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Blueprint tutorial series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at how we can use input events inside of Unreal Engine 4. Now we have used them very briefly as part of the series already, however we're going to be taking a moment to talk about the different ways that we can create an input event and also some of the different situations where you'd use one and also where you can and cannot use a input event. So what I'm going to do is start off by opening up my blueprint character. Now when it comes to using an input event, Ideally, you should only really be trying to use them within a character blueprint. And the reason why I'm saying this is because most blueprint actors are not going to allow you to use an input event. And the reason why you can't use an input event is simply because they are not attached to the player controller and as such they cannot take an input, whereas the player character, it can. Now for those of you that don't know what a input event is, it's essentially an event which is going to be firing off a sequence of code and that is a, that event is going to be linked to a key binding, whether that's something on your keyboard or your mouse and so on. Now there's two main ways that we can actually create an input event. Now the first of which, the most simple, is to just go into your blueprint editor, right click, scroll down and find your inputs. From here we can create all kinds of different input events such as mouse events, keyboard events, um, axis events and so on and as you go through these and as you learn blueprints more and more you are going to understand what these are a little bit better. But what you do have and what you need to know is you've just got a whole bunch of different type of events for things like PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers, VR. Um, head mounted displays, keyboard, mice and a bunch of other stuff. The ones that I'm going to introduce you to today are the most simple ones and they're going to be targeted at the computer. So that's going to be the ones for your keyboard events. And then if you scroll down sort of past the keyboard events, you've also got the mouse stuff as well. So mouse events and you can see we've got all of these in here. So we've got left click, right click and so on. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make an input event for the letter B on your keyboard. So just go to keyboard events and then from here you can see we have got a list of literally every key on the keyboard and we can key bind this so it makes an event. I am going to use the B key so I'm going to go up, find B and then just place it in here. And now what we have is an event which we can use to fire off sequences of code. First things first, we can fire off a sequence of code when they first press B and you can also fire off a sequence of code when they release that as well. So instances where you might want to use a keyboard event is things like a grenade for example. Um, you would keyboard that, uh, keybind that to the letter G on your keyboard and then you'd fire off a sequence of code to spawn in the grenade, set up the explosion, the damage and all of that good stuff. Or B, you could use it to create a widget to show your inventory on the screen or something like that. It's entirely up to you. But this is the easiest way to make a input event. Now there is another way of doing it which is a lot more efficient and I'm going to show you that now. So just delete anything you've got in here and then what we're going to do is go up to edit and project settings. Within our project settings we can create a proper input and I'm going to show you the difference for that input in a moment but on the left hand side within your project settings just navigate to your input panel. Within here at the top we've got our key bindings, we've got action mappings and we've also got axis mappings. Now these are two slightly different things. So your action mappings are pretty straightforward. These are going to be sort of single uh, click things. So you're going to press it once and it's going to set off that event straight away. Whereas your axis mappings are going to be things which have a value to it. So that's going to be things for moving left, right, um, you know, using joysticks and so on where it's not always going to be just firing off the event where it might be sort of somewhere in between. So you'll start to understand that a little bit more as we start to use them. But what you want to do for now, we are going to create an action mapping. This is similar to the input event that we created before. If you want to add one, just press the plus icon next to action mappings 
and it's going to give you one here. From there, you need to make, make it a name. So let's say you want to give this the name test input. And then beneath this, you can choose a key value, which is actually going to fire off this input event. So for example, if I wanted to do it on the mouse, I could just choose a little drop down for the mouse and then I could attach this to the right mouse button. If I want to have more than one key binding for this, so let's say I wanted it to be an input that can be fired off on the PlayStation controller as well. I just press add action mapping to group next to the test input. And then from there, I can also add something here. So for example, PlayStation 4, I could then add in this as well. Um, so hopefully you guys can start to see why you might want to use these type of key bindings instead of the hard coded ones, because you are able to add more than one key binding into a specific action mapping. So we've got that test input. Let's go ahead and bring it into our blueprint so we can see just how easy it is to use it. So close it, open up your blueprint character and all you've got to do now is right click and type in test input and you'll see that it comes under action events. So now if any of those key bindings that we have set up are pressed, it's going to fire off whichever code that you've got here. So if you're doing something clean and dirty, use the first method. If you want something that's going to be a bit more efficient or you need to have multiple key bindings for that one action, then use an action mapping through the project settings. Anyway guys, I am going to end off the video here. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.